The following is a review for critical, analytical, and educational purposes only, and is protected under Article 17 and 107 in the United States Fair Use Code. This video is not an infringement on copyright. Please enjoy the video. Why wouldn't I want to throw myself off a tall building? Three, two, one. Excuse me. Are you going to be long? What? Maybe I should just wait. I'll give you a shout on the way down. A Long Way Down takes a very dark subject matter, possibly the darkest subject matter, in this case death by way of suicide, and attempts to parlay that topic into the conventions of a typical British feel-good comedy. While that seems like a very slippery slope, it's not impossible. There are many films that have been able to pull this tone off. Doctor Strangelove is the most well-regarded example of this balance, but there's also films like Shaun of the Dead, Monty Python's Life of Brian, and of course the Twilight movies, that have taken very dark facets of culture and society and have made them gut-bustingly funny because, with the exception of Twilight, they were comedies that were about these themes and included them in clever ways. A Long Way Down, however, tries a different approach. Instead of being a comedy about suicide, it's a comedy that mocks suicide and it's this fatal conceptual error that makes A Long Way Down one of the most thoroughly unpleasant, rage-inducing movies that I have seen since... Well, let's go back to Twilight. A Long Way Down chiefly follows Pierce Brosnan as Martin Sharp, who is a disgraced talk show host who did time in prison for having sexual relations with a 15-year-old girl. Yep, this is our charming, likeable lead, but it's okay, because he thought she was 25. Disgraced and humiliated, Martin goes to the top of a building to kill himself on New Year's Eve, but by chance finds three other people up there who prevent each other from doing the deed. They then make a pact to not commit suicide until Valentine's Day for reasons that don't even make sense in the context of the movie, and along the way the quartets learn about loving life, each other, and blah blah blah. I've got to stress that this movie isn't terrible, because it's about suicide. It's all in the execution and the screenplay. All of our lead characters are thuddingly unlikable and unpleasant to be around. They constantly crack jokes at each other's expense despite the dark subject matter. They come across as ridiculously shallow and they're the type of people that you would be more than willing to push off the building we first find them at. At one point, our four heroes actually decide to go to the media with this with the express hope of making a quick book. I'm not even exaggerating or joking. How on earth are we supposed to like these people? What if we make it our story, not theirs? Make it a fun one. We were up there and we felt this glowing presence, ethereal. We were visited by an angel and it looked like Matt Damon. He said, thou shalt not die tonight. <laughs> and he was naked. Matt Damon, <laughs> tell me more. Here are some of the concepts that this movie makes fun of, not has comedy about, but actively makes fun of. Cancer, cancer survivors, survivor's guilt, the physically and mentally disabled, paedophilia, and those are just to name a few. And once again, we're supposed to find all of this charming because it's in a British rom-com. But I don't think it's charming. I think it's disgusting. In fact, I'm going to spoil one of the twists in the third act. I think A Long Way Down is a terrible, terrible movie, so I have no qualms about spoiling it. Near the end, it's revealed that because of the Four's media crusade, which they undertook to make money from, they claim that they saw an angel that looked like a naked Matt Damon. Really. And that between New Year's Eve and Valentine's Day, over the course of the movie, three more people have jumped off that same building in order to have that religious experience. And at no point do the characters feel bad for this. At no point are they ever punished for their selfish, egotistical, narcissistic and self-centered actions. The script gives these characters many, many opportunities to do something right or to atone for the things they've done, but they never go through with it, which makes it a frustrating viewing experience. The only character in this movie that isn't a terrible human being is Tony Collette as a mother caring for a disabled son, but in this context it comes across as an insidious attempt to wring unwarranted emotion out of the audience. In fact, there was a potential for a good story in this character. At first, she says that her reason for suicide was that her son would get better healthcare thanks to her being gone and thanks to her insurance. Okay, now there's a story and a political statement to be made there. Is it good? Well, maybe not, but it's something. But the movie immediately backtracks on this one idea in favour of laughing at her because she wears cardigans. What's wrong with cardigans? The film is so ridiculously mean-spirited that I was so close to walking out of the cinema. If it wasn't for the fact that there was only about 10 minutes left when I thought about doing it, 
then I probably would have done so. Almost every problem with this film is down to the screenplay, as the performances are actually pretty good. Aaron Paul, despite playing a character who lies about having cancer, yet is supposed to be sympathetic, puts in a good performance. Tony Collette is the only likeable person in the group despite her lazy role within the story, and while Imogen Poots does her best, her character is just a spoilt rich kid with no redeeming qualities. The weak link though when it comes to performances, surprisingly, is Pierce Brosnan. Brosnan is a good actor, but in contrast to the other three in this movie, it seems like he's acting in a completely different film. His character seems to be removed from the real world that I was expecting him to be a ghost or maybe the twist was that while the other three were pretending to have seen an angel, Brosnan actually was one. But no, Brosnan is just a character from another movie and another genre that seems to have walked on the set of this film. Admittedly, the movie does look good, with impressive camera work for this type of genre, a good sense of style and a good sense of composition. The music is also pretty good, but all of this belongs in a movie that is much better than this. But no matter how good or bad the performances or the production are, the script is just that fatal blow that cripples the quality of a long way down. Most of the script is just mean-spirited jabs at the subject matter, and the rest is just lazy exposition. Despite such a small and modest setup, there was actually quite a few baffling plot holes. At one point, the four go on a trip to Spain, but who paid for it? The characters keep saying that they're broke, so it seems like an excuse for the cast to go on holiday and shoot a movie while they're there. The whole film is just an exhaustingly misguided experience that wallows in the audience's despair and is just a depressing watch. And to top it all off, despite the opening scene, this doesn't feel like a movie about its own themes. Yeah, the characters want to kill themselves, but where are the stakes? I don't like watching these people, so I have no interest in seeing them survive or not. The very real and very dark subject of suicide is treated as a plot device, and that feels freaking unforgivable. I could end this review by saying that I would rather jump off a building than watch this movie again, but I won't, because suicide is not a joke. It's a topic that deserves more care, respect, and thought than it's given in this movie. I give A Long Way Down half a star out of five, and I feel pretty bad for giving it that much. We're here. Of course we're here. Kind of cool, huh? It's not much, son, but we're a start.